we are in Vegas, man. I already uh, played one session uh, last night. Tonight we're gonna venture on to the strip. Had to stop there. Can't be run over while holding the camera. So probably gonna go to the Bellagio. Man, okay, overall, pretty nice room. How can you complain about a comp room, right? Like I said, we are here in Vegas. We're, uh, we don't have the best view, but it's a free room. You cannot complain about a free room, right? Look at this view. <laughs> I don't realize how many aliens live up here on top of the roof. Look at that. Look at them alien uh, spaceships. <laughs> Edit the Bellagio video and then we're going to try to squeeze in a, a session tonight. Hopefully we can do it. Let's get to work. Good morning, YouTube. Man, it's like there's a really comfortable bed right there, and I've been awake since 1 a.m. But then again, I slept at 9 p.m. But I woke up about 1 in the morning, and I was like, "Well, I, be, I might as well just go ahead and get started on the video." The this video it was the. See Bellagio, Bellagio during March Madness. So, anyway, it's it's kind of crazy that nice bed right there, but I can't get comfortable. I would rather get comfortable in my truck. It's crazy. So in this session, oh by the way, before before we get started, check it out. I got this shirt, man. I found it in in uh nebraska iowa yeah found it in iowa and i was like you know what that's me man grinding daily anyway uh before we get started man shout out to uh jason man and this session man we were i was playing right next to him i was uh he was uh, to my immediate right you know it's uh it's funny he was like he kept on looking at me at the beginning as soon as, as he sat down he kept on looking at me and he said yeah you look familiar. He said you look like this guy that does the uh, YouTube videos. <laughs> so and then I thought of yeah, that was me, man. And then we got to talking, man. It was nice playing with you, Jason, man. I I'm pretty sure that's your name, Jason. So if that wasn't your name, I, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure it's Jason. If I can uh, if I can remember correctly, I know I wrote it down on one of my little sticky notes. But anyway, shout out to you, Jason, man. But let's do this. So when we sit down at this table, right, there's a, there's a guy pretty much almost directly across from me or across the table. He's probably nursing a stack, eight to nine hundred dollars, right? And uh, I haven't gotten to any hands and what I have seen so far, he's pretty doggone aggressive. So, I mean, his aggression is just continuous no matter what it was on the flop, you know? So at first I, could, I didn't know how to deal with him, you know? I just, uh, it was, it, it was, it was new to me. It was it was a new environment. I had to adapt to it. I didn't know how to deal with it. I really didn't. And uh, uh, Jason can even attest to that. You know, I was I had some premium hands. Um, I was making middle pairs, and you'll see. I'm I'm gonna play the videos right now. I'm picking them up. But I mean, I just don't see no reason to analyze these uh, uh, 
these hands because there were so many of them. I mean, he was chopping me down about $20, $30 at a time, you know. Uh, I would raise, he would call, and then he would dunk the flop, but I don't hit the flop. So I, I really cannot, I, I, I can't put him to the test yet, you know. So it, I just, I, I was be, uh, being very patient, but uh it was very frustrating and then we pick up this hand right here so we have ace 10 off we are under the gun plus two so of course we open it up it's not that strong of a hand ace 10 off but uh nevertheless we raised it to uh 12 dollars and the button calls which is the uh the villain uh we're referring to as a someone who's so aggressive the flop came out ace jack nine two diamonds it was jack of diamonds and nine of diamonds so um it's a pretty good flop for us. Normally, I would bet this, but I just checked it to him, and sure enough, without a fail, he bets 30. So I, I, I called. I was like, well, I got, I got a pair of aces, a pair of ace with a uh, somewhat, somewhat light kicker, you know. Um, and another thing to note is that I've seen him with his, uh, uh, he was raising and being aggressive with like ace five, ace seven off, you know, ace six off. So at this time, I put him in, t in a very, very wide range, you know, uh, calling twelve dollars. So I feel like I my uh, my ace ten is holding. So we called the thirty, and then the turn came six of diamonds. Um, we checked to him, and he bets another thirty. Now the sizing is a little weird to me. If he was trying to get value, I would uh, I would think he would bet a little bit more. Uh, since you got three diamonds, uh, three diamonds out there on the board, I felt like I still had the best hand with that six of diamond out there. And when he bets thirty, but I, I repicked my card, and then I shoved all in with that diamond out there. You know, it's a little scary, but we're holding one blockers, and he thinks for a minute, and then he folds. I think we had him beat. We had uh, we had the right read. I don't, uh, I don't know exactly what his hand was, but I, I felt like I had him beat. I don't think if he had ace there, I think he could have, he could have found a call. So I don't think he had an ace. And then this very next hand come up. We got king ten off, right? We are under the gun, and we raised to twelve. Hijack calls, of course. It's him again. He calls, and so the flop come ten eight six rainbow. I did a C bet, uh, eighteen dollars. It's still a pretty good flop for us, you know. We got uh, we got top pair, pretty good kicker. He raised to forty five dollars. What is he really representing here? You know, I mean, 12. with his wide range, there's straight possibility for him having that. If he hit a straight, would he really three bet me? I, w I would think he would just call me and float me, you know, the whole way. I'm trying, trying to b bluff all my chips away, you know. So, and if he hit a 10, okay, ace 10 is really the only thing that's beating me. I think I had a, uh, I got a pretty good spot there, you know. So if he got like 10, 9, 10 jacks, so he still got a gutter there. I had a feeling he was just trying to push me off this pot. So I shove all in for the remaining 200-ish or so. So... Um, I know, I know probably a bad idea shoving the king 10. Basically, with the way I've been playing, I'm representing pretty strong here and uh, I can tell that he pays attention to the table. I was trying to use my image because I just, uh, uh, I just shoved all in on him and then he folded. Like I said, I don't know, I don't know what to make of him, you know, that's, that's all he does, he's just, uh, he raises and he, he continues to raise and he's, his third, his third bet, his third C bets are a little weird. They're way under value, you know. So he's C betting, but he really don't want to build a pot after, after the second bullet or after the first bullet. So, you know, I thought it was a pretty good spot again to go all in on him. And sure enough, it was, uh, it was good enough. He folded. So, I think that actually got I, I, that tilted him, and uh, you'll see in the future streaks. So next hand. So this next hand, we're from the, we're in the middle position, holding jack eight spades. Pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty good double, double gapper suited. 
Somebody opens to six dollars, which is a little weird, but they open to six dollars. Uh, two people called behind them, so we went ahead. We're getting a pretty good price here, so went ahead and called. We got five people to the flop, and flop came uh, ten, seven, king, and two spades. It's ten of spades, seven of spades. So, pretty good flop for us. Uh, we got a we got a gut shot along with a flush draw. It checked all the way around, surprisingly, with five people in the pot. Checked all the way around, so I, uh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing somebody's either trying to trap or nobody really hit any of that, which is a little crazy with five people in the flop. So, turn it's another king, and it's the king of spades. So it's a pretty good turn for us, but it paired the board, so it's a little, little scary. So the original razor decided to bet fourteen dollars so we check and then it checks down to the wild card fourteen dollar bet it's a little weird here so it's a uh, tough spot it sure seemed like he's representing a king here I don't know what he's really representing here but it sure seemed like a king so value bet for fourteen dollars but a good bet so we, we made a call of fourteen dollars and uh, the turn or the river is a brick and he checks. I'm pretty sure we have the best hand here so the the question really is uh, how much how much should we bet? Now we're looking at a $58 pot right? Uh, yeah about 58 right. So we're looking at $58 pot and it's checked to us from the aggressor so I I think a little less than half a bet is a pretty good sizing so I bet 35 and he he snap calls and then we show Jack eight for the flush and he mucks his hand so I we really, I don't know I don't know what he had I'm guessing I'm guessing he had some type of a king you know and probably a weak kicker so so this next hand it's the last hand of this session uh, we look down at pocket fours we are under the gun plus two and what do you know we're gonna be up against the same villain that uh I think we got him pretty much on tilt now, so um, his his stack is dwindling down pretty bad. So uh, I think I kind of got his game now, and I got to his head in uh, in so many different spots. So uh, it's I I want I'm pretty confident that he's on tilt. So, but anyway, we got uh, pocket fours, and uh, we open it to twelve dollars, and he calls. He's on the button. So uh, the flop came uh, Jack five seven rainbow and we check and he checks the turn came a king I'm the aggressor here so I went ahead and bet on the king uh, trying to rep the king so I, I bet $18 and he calls and then the river came a six now the backdoor straight got there with a gutter so it's probably best to just give up on this hand I was actually ready to give up on this hand, but I still did not believe him that uh, uh, he got a better hand than me. Uh, so I was I was ready to just go ahead and chill down here. He bets forty five dollars, so we're looking at a sixty three dollar pot, and he bets forty five dollars. Now, from my history with this guy, right? So I've been chopping him. Uh, I've been chopping him up for quite a bit now, and he started the hand at about two twenty, and I'm. I'm hovering around 380, 390 or so. So, um, but he's really repping nothing. Could not see that he would have anything here. So, and and uh, sure enough, I made the call <laughs> with a bottom pair, and uh, he shows queen ten. So, and then I show my pocket fours. He did not like that. He did not like that at all. And sure enough, about a few hands later, he went busto. So, the last note I want to take is that. What would you do in that particular situation? I tell you what I did. I had no idea. I really didn't. I was I was very confused. I did not know where I was at for the most part at the beginning of the game. And on this session, we are we came up a winner. Uh, we won a whopping thirty-one dollars. Woohoo! <laughs> I was putting in some tough spots. So, and uh, it was from the same guy and now that I look back into it I probably could have called a couple of spots there and I'm pretty sure he was bluffing but 
You know, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Thinking Poker. If you don't know them, you gotta go check them out. Just search them on Google, Thinking Poker. It's uh, Andrew Brokus and Nate Mavis. And I tell you, those guys, they can dissect poker hands. They take poker really seriously from what I can tell. You know, so they they do a poker uh, poker podcast every week. So uh, you gotta you gotta go check them out if you if you're if you want to take it a little bit more on the serious side. So uh, and me, I am. So uh, by the way, this not that's not paid advertisement or anything like that. I just think that they are pretty awesome guys. You know, they're uh, the way they dissect poker and whatnot. So I love it. I've been uh, I've been listening to them and I've been trying to get into this uh, range thing you know you put a uh, you put a range instead of an exact card on your opponent so you do you put them on a the range and and then you do a uh, you put them you you put a little co uh, combo sets or whatnot combinations of hands that they could have or possibly have I gotta go deliver my load today first thing in the morning and it sure is that time of the day look it's morning time And I have been awake since 1 a.m. Before we go, let me know what you think of this uh, session down below. We win a whopping at $31.